what's up everybody? How are you doing? You doing good? Here we are another Tuesday. Uh, now we one more week of experience to doing this, right? You know, for me I'm more used to, to work with all of you in front of me or behind me or around. You are not here today. It's okay. We, we have to, we're gonna put it together. We're gonna work in a sequence which is gonna make it easier for you at home to practice it. I mean, you don't need a lot of room. Even you can do in the bathroom too. And the balcony, not too much because it's still a little cold outside. But uh, you can do space in the kitchen, in the bathroom, bathrooms, and different places in home. Um, well, let's start it. Let's, uh, let's uh, show a little bit what is the idea. Because uh, we have a small space, we're going to do work in a small sequence, right? From now on, we're going to wish and hope that this doesn't look that long. But we don't know how long it's gonna last this situation, right? And I wish and hope that the, all of you at home are well and nobody is sick and, and you don't have no family of people sick around and can this stop uh, very soon everything right there, what it is. Uh, so let's go for the small sequence for the small space. Uh, things that we're gonna be using, okay, materials. One of them will be ocho cortados, uh, que es el típico, you know that name, I don't like it for different reasons, but I love the step. Um, so we're gonna use the ocho cortado, we're gonna use a media luna forma and uh, crosses, yeah, or formas of the cross for the firewood. So we're gonna start as always with the simple basic, which one is the baldosa, yeah. You always know that our baldosa is our safety for everything. By now, we're gonna do a little open embrace the movements, so you're going to start to see it, and later on we're going to go into the close embrace. So I'm going to take it into making out your cortado, right? So we're going to start for this part first. How we do that? We're going to have it one and six in the baldosa, or two step backward, opening, yeah, or the close of the movement, and forward for her as a forward walk. We're going to so do a forward ocho, forward, side, three, right? So, so we have it. One, two, three steps. We're going to create a rotation for her. And we're going to see coming back, walking forward to complete the forward ocho that we interrupt before. Yeah? We're not going to go into the cross. We're going to do a straight ahead as a forward ocho. One, two. So, so this forward cross, if we interrupt over here, we change the direction of the side step and we go to the forward up. Forward, side. That will be the first part that you need to be working on. Okay, so we have it. Do one baldosa simple. Can you see how you close this movement? And then do the next, the beginning of the step. One, Two step back, open, torsion, proposing movement forward for her, collect for you, forward, side, finish. All right, this will be our first part. So, so let's talk about what happened in the leader's body and what happened also in the follower body. So, so on the leader body, what's going on? Anytime I move, I have it. the one the six and the baldosa, our baldosa in, in, in our school, two seconds step backward, right? When I open, I transfer my weight and I'm gonna bounce a little bit backward by changing my torsion position. Yeah? Let's repeat that a little bit again. So, so we have it. One, two step backward. This is my chest is open. I have it. One, two. I open over to the right. I continue to the right, and I continue open to the right after I rebound a little bit to transfer my weight to my left leg. In this moment, she is in the opposite leg of mine, and I propose her to walk forward as in I move my body and try to pivot him, change my weight, and then the forward cross for her, forward, side, finish. Again, one, two, three, bouncing, Accompany her forward, make you pivot it, shift your weight, 
power side change. That's very much what the leader has. So let's observe the follower steps and that response for the leader. So we have it. One, two, three. So that bounce from me and change, make it a change of weight. Make it so the change of front of her. So now we continue in that direction. Forward, side, change. Right? So let's observe again and I need the body. We have it. One. And because my body is already here, she already feels that sensation of this channel. By the next step, she feels more rotation. By the opening, and when I come in back, she feels the torsion. Yeah. So now, when I propose her to go forward, I'm gonna keep my pivoting. I'm gonna leave this foot behind for me for a second to help me as a, a anchor on the floor so I can pivot in better over this leg. I change my way, forward, Bye. Let's try that with the music. We practice in this. Do not run. Just take everything as a as a simple step, simple basic. Very calm, very relaxed. It mean, you know, we're gonna use this, this song from Miguel Caló, yeah, Lejos de Buenos Aires, the name. We're gonna send it to you. You're gonna have it. Uh, you can download it and listen to that song as we work in that day too. I'm gonna try to send it the early possible. All right. Now, when I be working with the music, I say keep it. And simple beat, come. observe, we take it right now all the time. What I will um, require or need by in, in this part of the lesson is to your focusing on your body, to focus in uh, all the small details, the more you can find to make the step be uh, well or useful. Meaning, feel at this moment of how I open my chest. Right? I don't open a lot, but this gives us a sensation on her ribs. Right? So see, I start open my chest so she can navigate. I open with her. When I come back, I feel that channel. I let her go and I see how I can pivot in. And then I change my way. Forward side finish. Right? So see, each of those details you have to really, really pay attention a lot when that happens. One. Two, three. She's coming up. I finish my pivoting. Forward, side, finish. As you just been experiencing that, you're gonna start to see how the the each part of the movement is coming easier 
in a way, but at the same time it's coming more um, uh, a different format, different dynamic. As the first moment, you will try very linear, and by later you're gonna see how this movement is gonna rotate, right? We're gonna show one more time that. I wanna show something very, very linear, and uh, let's do it in this direction. You can see the linear part on, the, on, on, on our back when she appears. One, two, three. This is very linear, right? And by the time, by the time you should have a result of uh, how the movement is coming, uh, be curving. You can see? Now we're curving. As you see, now the front is different. Because so my rotation is less. My view is maybe bigger. Forward, side, spin. One, open, back, turning. This is a forward. Forward, side, spin. So since we are uh, experiencing and exploring all this area, let's uh, uh, break down this ocho cortado. You know, the step, I say, the name that I don't like. I love, as I said, I love the step. And I love the pattern. So I don't like the name because there's a lot of misunderstanding with that. So, so let's, uh, let's break down the ocho cortado. You know what the ocho is, right? The ochos are forward crosses. I mean, two forward cross make it one ocho for the person who does the ocho. It can be me or it can be her. Not just the follower does ocho. The leader can do ochos too. So, so two forward cross make one ocho. And from there on up, they are just ochos, right? We don't want to count how many crosses we do. But uh, sometimes when we do a molinete, we don't do one forward ocho, one side step, one back ocho, one side step, because there's no in ocho here. This is just one forward cross, one side step, one back cross, one side step, one forward cross, one side step. So if I do two back crosses, yeah, this is one ocho. Or if I do two forward crosses, that's one forward ocho. So basically, the drawing has to go and come back to kind of create that. To complete the, 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 to complete the to A. To complete the A. And if I observe in the upper body of the leader, the leader draw very much an ocho on the curve. And that's the ocho who's drawing on the, on the floor, I mean the infinite number, by right? the, the infinite uh, symbol. Yeah. The ocho. The ocho, right? So, so the ocho cortado, eh, for our knowledge and what are these step, steps means, right? Because they say, what is the, the ocho? For me, in the, for example, typical on the base to the cross, which is where they're coming from, they lead one forward ocho, yeah, one forward cross, because it was a cross before, this is the second forward cross. And over here, they supposed to lead the ocho, right? The supposed to lead the ocho. But instead of that, the movement was interrupted by one glass of wine or of something. It was interrupted. And instead of coming to the forward cross, and went to the side. And then they continue with the forward cross, with the next cross, which one would be the ocho. So for me, the ocho cortado is to go back to the ocho, so we can go back by crossing forward, by closing the movement. So I can have a ochos, yeah, and I can be ochos in parallel system, and open with her, and coming back, and ocho in a parallel system. So then I can interrupt this, and go back to the ocho. The same could happen in this side. Yeah? Because if those ocho cortados, I can cut or interrupt the ocho in that direction, or interrupt the ocho, the ocho in this direction. Because I can interrupt the ocho in this direction, or interrupt the ocho in this direction. I mean, we can cut, yeah, or we can cut the ocho. So as you see, the ocho, the idea is to come back all the time to the same forward cross. 
it's also very uh, typical, yeah, the, this movement that we do from here. We cut there and we're going back into this cross, right? Into the close of the movement. So, so we close in the cross, o sea, un, un, un cruce cerrado. ¿sí? We close it. Or we can have it just a normal forward cross, which means is walking. Means the same movement as from walking the forward cross, or the movement be closing and the forward cross. We can still the forward cross. Yeah. So, so we can end this movement by going there or by ending here. Yeah. Don't think that it's just one uh, format. Uh, the instructor, you take the last of the lesson today, Hernan in this case, teach me just this movement. It has that name and it's just that way. No, it has many results. If you close your mind there, uh, anytime the, 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 the leader, as a follower, the leader leads something, you always wanna just cross uh, or close the movement. And that's not necessarily. And the same for the leader. Uh, anytime uh, you lead, you cannot lead just this uh, step. You can lead uh, another format, another variation, another dynamic. Uh, he mo be more open for, for more uh, options, you know, for more possibilities. So essentially, just to understand the wording, the cortado means uh, cut or interrupted. So basically something was happening, we interrupted it, and then we attempting to b go back to what was happening before. So in this case, I was doing the ochos, and then either, you know, maybe I misread the lead, uh, or somebody who was inventing this, maybe they misread the lead, or, or drink too, much, too much wine, drink too much wine, or simple trip or something. So I was supposed to go and come back, but instead going in the same direction, I took another extra step and then understood that I was supposed to be coming back. So it's just an interruption in the normal circle, uh, in the normal cycle of the, of the events. Um, but the idea is to is to lead it correctly, right? Right now it's a step. It's <laughs> a step, but it's correct. So sometimes it happens, you know, we, we teach in a, I mean, more more than beginner, like an advanced beginner, maybe a person, and we give it to them the ocho, right? And they start to lead in the ochos, and, 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 and by mistake, they went there and they're coming back again, right? And then they went there again and they're coming back again. And those, they say, oh, I make a mistake, I make a mistake. They say, yeah, but it's a mistake now for you, for the way you clean it up, it's something perfectly, and which one you end and lead it and follow it in a good, in a good form, all right? Uh, we're gonna be working on different versions, but today specifically, we are working on the version where I go forward in the direction that my leader is indicating, then there is an open step, a change of direction to come back, and then the leader is deciding, the leader in this moment can decide if the cross is gonna be closed or if the cross can be a normal progressing forward cross and later on I will close to this position. That position. And one little uh, digression here as you know, as you, if, if you're really practicing right now. Uh, later on in the uh, class here, or whichever one you're watching first, we are working this week also on the rulo. So, because here right now, as we're practicing it very slowly, the leader gives a lot of time for this closure. If you practice your rulo, you can introduce it here and practice as your leader is practicing your, um, the steps of, uh, and the lead for his side. Yeah, and also in the, as we're going uh, to take advantage of the whole lesson, guys, okay? You see right now, all this right now, that we practice just a small part of the whole combination. We have already one combination just to dancing. Meaning, if you cannot get done the whole thing, you can do at least just that part and, and dance in this, you know, because you know, different people have different levels, but we're gonna try to push in uh, as a very nice tight combination to go on. You know what I'm saying? So if we go in again, one more shot to this person, right? You know what I'm one, two, oh. Motion, forward, seguro for her, forward, side, thing. Just in case, Lillian, give to her time, yeah, so she can do the, the her embellishment, do not lead it, okay? Because they don't like it if you lead the embellishment. <laughs> All right, let's continue now with the next part. Um, let's go with one uh, exercise. This one is gonna help you a lot. 
We're gonna take a first normal side step and practice hold. We're gonna pivot her and change our weight, and we're gonna walk outside partner. Yeah, always in a curl. You're gonna delay your body a little bit. Let her start passing to the other side. Yeah, so she goes side forward. You're gonna take the finish to rest. Right, let's start again. You can do the baldos again if you want it. One, two. You propose the pivoting. Change your weight a little bit in front of her. Walk with her in a curl. See, I delay my leg behind. I am in my axis. So I can open my chest so she can pass from this point to that point. My, now I continue open to see go forward. I'm gonna put my foot here in front. The same that we did before, we build in here. Change your way, forward, side, in. One, two. Propose the pivoting to her. Yeah. She receives the pivoting. Change your way a little bit more in front of her. Just as an exercise because we are far away, so you'll be more comfortable. If why the race? If I change my way here, I'm gonna be pulling her. Change your way to be comfortable with her in this bike this whole. Walk as a very much three tracks, right? This leg is in one track, this is in another, and the other leg is in another. In the left leg and individual track, the right leg are very much in the same track. And arriving to her axis. We might start that I am facing in that direction right now. I change to the other side because we always face each other. On my feet, I'm gonna feel they get rolling from forward to back into my heel. Yeah. That brings her at the front. So see, now I'm gonna open more. When I see passing, I'm gonna transfer my way again from the heel to the front. Send my foot and pivot. Yeah, again. Let me take this angle right now. One, two. I pivot in her, change my way in front. Three tracks. Again, you see you behind the camera. We are here. We send it to the other side, and I'm here with her. I go from my ball of the foot to my heel. And that's the energy, right? Because I don't want you to pull with your hands. I want you to feel how you're rolling from the ball of the foot to the heel. Yeah, ball of the foot to the heel. When you feel that, you start to open the chest. Send the foot up front, pivoting, and wait for her. Change your way, forward, side, finish. Right? Let's try that a little bit with the music. Same song, again, what we were talking before in the music. Everything is slowly right now. Not all the time, no nothing crazy. Very relaxing. Uh, for those people who already be, for sure we asked in the intermediate lesson, if you didn't, it's about the torsion. Usually this exercise we do in parallel system, right? We do in this parallel system from here, and we take the whole torsion. In this moment, we're gonna do the movement in cross system. So take the baldosa, one, two, right? So because you pivot in her, right? She so still do just the action of pivoting because you're changing your way, now you are in cross system. So now, when I walk forward, I face it in this direction, right? I continue with my chest around 
passing over my toes. I feel the direction when she's coming into the forward step, and I follow her movement. I change my way, forward, side, finish. This is all upper body work. It has nothing else, nothing crazy to do, no hand pushing. Propose the pivoting, change your way in front, take the walk, allow your upper body to go around. When you finish it, pass it in front, release the foot, and help yourself to pivot, it's no problem. Yeah, you keep that foot there as an anchor. Change your way, forward, side, finish. If we see the follower uh, work, she has forward, side. Those are in the pivoting. The leader propose this torsion, right? When we propose the torsion, later on in the engagement of the movement, she feels her pivoting. The engagement is one of centrifugal uh, energy of this spiral is coming to the ground, going to her hips uh, or to her standing leg exactly to pivot it on the back foot. And the energy for that, right, as we get the torsion, the energy is going back there. Like if we do in a, a normal lapis, the leg is going backward because the energy is going back there, right? So say, you don't have to twist her because this is typical habit that we like to twist our follower. No, go to the side, propose the torsion. She's taking care of her pivoting because you suggest that. You don't make her pivoting. She does her pivoting. You lead what is what we need to do. What is she supposed to be doing? Do I do my thing? But I am not doing her movement. Uh, with my body on up, with her body to do her movements. Meaning, side step, propose the torsion, she pivoting, I change my way in front of her, I exaggerate it by now, do you see it? We take the walk, again, I'm facing here. I, mean, I am very much in an open position. Don't confuse, you are not crossing your body here. It's gonna happen later, what you see is on the other side. By now, I'm, I'm here. And my shoulder, my hips are in line with her. Now I am in a closing position. Now when she goes forward, I release my leg to give more space for me. We pivot, we pivot, forward, side, and finita la musica. At that point. Now for the followers, I mean, the leaders, they understand the same, but we kind of assume that that's the understanding. But for the followers, especially the, the, the new ones that, you know, you guys just started and kind of get cut in the middle of your development. So you have to understand or remember from the lesson that uh, you perceive the lead from, for your, through your upper body and through your hands, through the embrace, but really what responds to the, uh, to the lead is the lower body. So yes, you will feel the lead on the upper body. You will feel that he's suggesting you the torsion but you don't want to do the torsion on your upper body because, um, you know, we're saying that everything is natural in tango, but there is a language of communication and Correct. we're practicing certain things to right. understand that this is the way we communicate in tango. So in tango, we communicate through uh, embrace and through the upper body, but what really takes the action is the legs, yeah? So for example, if I misunderstand or maybe I just started learning and, I, and he's telling to me maybe I will do this because I feel this suggestion of the pivot or suggestion of the torsion on my upper body. So I might be doing this. So yes, you're right that you are feeling this, but we know that in tango we are keeping the torso towards the partner. So I, I will not resign from that pleasure. Yeah, And I'm gonna translate my pivot into the hips and I will attempt to keep my um, torso towards the partner as much as, as possible. possible. Yeah, don't over don't overthink so about it you have to I be don't here. Try like, uh, like a pretzel yeah as much as possible. As much as possible comfortably yeah. so now as we proposing by right, she does the pivoting and does it we, we allow her to do that I change my way comfortably because I want to as I practice her to be in front of her. Right, or aiming to stay with her. So in that way, take the walk. Here we continue with the movement. So we still uh, 
pay attention to each other, you know, pay attention to her, she pay attention to me. We don't have to be, because this is sometimes be confusing, uh, we don't have to be in front of the partner because she's, this, is, this is her whole front. And it's not that, the same for her, sometimes I have to be in front of my partner, and it's not in front. My hip is facing there, it's, it's not right in front, it's... It's where the energy is coming. Basically, is I, can, I can imagine that he's going this way and I'm trying to send the same kind of imaginary vibe towards him. I don't have to be directly in front of him, yeah? But also here is uh, what Hernan was talking about, uh, crossing or open position. When I'm passing from one side of that side step to the other side of the side step during that way transition, that's when distortion leads, but distortion also allows me the space. If he tries to push me over to my next step, but he stays, I will pass him. Uh-huh. To say, as you see, but we see that, and this is going to be off, too, in her body. Let's say, if we can pay attention also that we are uh, facing, yeah, toward each other, and as we pass, you see that the, the camarographer guys, right? To say, I am the camarographer, she's the camarographer on the other side, and we shoot in an apple in the middle. So we need to just to focus to the apple, so we can the de center, or whatever you like. I mean, I don't know, at this moment, apple, right? And I'm here. So we both shoot in the same. So if Anita has one camera, I have the other. We have to just aim it into the apple together, all right? So that way we keep the attention to each other. So we send the leg, and the foot, pivot, chain way, forward, and side finish. All right? Good. Now, let's go to one more part, and then we're gonna just put it all messy together, right? This is gonna be very difficult movement. Right? We're gonna go a little bit more close to the camera. Excellent. Because it's going to see the feet in a little bit. This is working across it. So see, we're gonna take the movement in this position, right? So see, this is, it will be the walking forward cross for the follower, right leg for the follower forward, right leg for the leader back. Here, now. So you take a little bit first, forward and back, this move. Few times, so you can start to feel the pendulo of your body, right? The pendulo of your body. So you're gonna feel how the body is going one and three, so you're gonna go there, you're gonna let the leg kick. Yeah, you're gonna let the leg, no, don't, don't try to kick a horse, okay? Like a uh, table, no. You're gonna see how the pendulum want to go. I need to both for you practicing that because it's the sensation of that pendulum. And in one moment, we're gonna change the pendulum, the angle of that pendulum to create a forward cross for her. I show the pendulum first because if I show the cross, you're gonna start crossing immediately. So say first, you can go a step to step to feel how much and you say, oh wait, let's practice a little bit of the pendular action. Pendular, pendular. How the leg continue. How the leg continue. Yeah? In a one moment, you're gonna change the angle of that. That means when I be going here, I'm gonna do in relation to the camera to have the, the possibility. So in one moment, after we do feel then, you wanna change like a little loop of that. So the head axis move from this point to this point. If I keep my hands in place for a second, let me just close this arm. So I'm gonna keep this as a reference very much in the axis. So when well, it is coming in this direction, it comes in that line, and now she moves to this side of the line. So say, my hands is a line of reference. So you can see that she's not going just forward and back, right, and try to cross. And she cross over here with that position. She can't cross there. So the only way to cross is to the axis move in this direction. In that moment, when she cross there, we're gonna do forward, side, and spin. So we can again fight a few times and cross system. Bum, ta, a few to see, landing, forward, side, 
when we are in this position, the follower has to be passed the, with the leg. So she has to already pass through this moment because if you kind of create that loop a little bit early, she will cross but behind. behind yeah? so, so the leg has to be as though going to the next step, but when I'm already past my axis, he makes me go to the other yeah. side of my leg. Mm -hmm. You have to, uh, as just we were talking before, as uh, the movement is passing the pendulum at front. The, here we have a two pendulum. This movement goes there, yeah, and the next pendulum is going here. So when this pendulum passes over here, and the way back, it will be changing the angle to fall in this direction. Yeah? Do not change the angle, as Anita says, earlier, because it's not going to be no more pendulum. It's going to be in a cross in this moment. We're going to be a closing closing the crossing backward. And what we want is to make it want to close closer to forward. Yeah? So say, again, we do with the music a little bit, just few exercises in place, and then we do the, the there you go. Was the music on? Maybe we don't hear it, but the basic you can have an organization to practice in baldosa one, two, same way for the leader because my left leg is free right now. I walk, create the third pendulum, second pendulum, third pendulum, on the fourth, I cross. I don't change my way forward, side, feet. Why don't change my way? For those who have less experience. Because when I change my way here, I change the system. So right now I'm a cross system. Yeah. We are in a cross system. When I see cross over here, yeah, now she changed back to the parallel system. Because if we start in parallel, yeah, in this moment for this exercise, we are in cross system. And now we're going into parallel system by she's closing on her foot. Right? Right. Let's put this in close embrace so you can uh, see it and you can see how it works. So it's a side together that you change the way. Second pendulum, third pendulum, fourth pendulum. You cross, forward, side, in. Again. Back, side, together. One, two, three, four. Cross, forward, side, finish. Good? That you're gonna have as a practice, and you can practice very close and break. Now, let's put all the, the elements uh, together, okay? So, so, what we have. In the beginning of the lesson, Be working on this ocho cortado. Yeah. So, so now she did the rulo and I'm gonna let her go to the side step. So, so now I'm gonna come in to the sacada here. Which one we can talk a little bit and give us an exercise for this. I changed my way a little bit in front of her to take it the media luna that we worked with before. Put her front, kick it. And in the end of this, we add the cross and the pendulum 
and to get. So say, let's talk a little bit about the Saka before I, because I forgot to put that together. So say, in this moment, we are working in one Saka. Here's the one on the my forward cross on her open step. Here, on her. Right? Because we're going to take a side to side first. One, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah, so you think it fit together there. Yeah, so we go again. One, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah, so you wanna change your weight in front of her for the moment. Then we wanna do it in a, in a close and blade. One, two, three, four, one, two. Right? Let's try it with the music and a close embrace. cortado, de sacada, en de media luna, ¿vale? Entonces, we have all the elements for separate. Let's try to put it all together. Entonces, we have it. First, let's do just one simple baldosa to tell the body get used to. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we're going to do the ocho cortado. One, two, open, pivoting. Change the way, display, same way, media luna, put up front, forward, side, finish. Yeah? Again. And one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Open for the cut, coming back. Change your way, side step for her, sacada for me. I take it a moment, I need a media luna. We lead her to the cross, forward, side, finish. The idea for this, as you observe, we start in one place and we end them very much in the same place. That means you have a, a small space at home. Oh, imagine your home right now is a big crowd in Milonga. Cross, forward, side. You are in the same area dancing all the time. We have the music.
have it done in that simple time of the music, right? Because we went just very simple. We listen to Kalo, relax. I know you have more rhythmical and more element to do there. We're gonna work on double time, but as you're practicing, you're gonna practice pro most likely first in open embrace and then in close embrace. You will notice when we uh, when we're doing it in close embrace and we talk and we stop. We uh, have to open, we are forced to open the embrace during those transitions for the saccadas. And you're also going to be forced to open if you're trying to do everything uh, in single time. Forced in a sense that the movement is so slow and the movement is so delayed that it needs a little bit more space. But then once you understand the steps and you are uh, able to remember what you're doing, it's actually easier to apply the normal timing which uh, the follower goes double time on the backside forward for her media luna or for her molinete. And in this case, the opening of the embrace, you will not perceive it so strongly. You can actually uh, pretty much sustain the close yeah, embrace. Yeah, the, the image you're gonna keep as a close embrace, remember you will, uh, don't don't confuse to keep it tight. It's not tight, you're gonna have a space because the, the saccada needs the space, even if we are, close you see you're gonna observe us to be keep it close and people are gonna are gonna ask you but how you do to do this like in that close embrace uh, we do in close embrace but uh, even in the closer embrace uh, if you open uh, to exaggerate three millimeters or five millimeters it's, it's, it's going to the open side because in that little space is gonna always appear you're gonna feel as Anita said before the, the, because you're gonna slowly the body gonna ask you to open a lot, right? But uh, it's gonna happen later on that you go rhythmically because the follower will ask you to go, uh, her body will ask you to go in the normal timing and your body will happen a very small opening but it will exceed, yeah? Uh, now also remember that the saccada is not only the displacement, visual displacement that you see that the leg got, got displaced, but also saccada allows the exchange of the positions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that exchange of the position, in this case, we only doing one saccada. Essentially, he's using the saccada to take my, uh, directly take my spot. So that's why the opening is not absolutely necessary. Again, you will perceive it if you're doing it very slowly, but when it's in a normal timing, it's, it's almost imperceivable. You will feel it between you, between but you, but you will not see it for outside. It's not really uh, visible. No. We're not gonna explain uh, in this moment why the double time is always there. Some of you already know. Some of you know the explanations from Gustavo Navera why. Uh, but essentially, it's mostly uh, assumed that on the back side forward, the follower uh, is going uh, on a double time because the steps are, let's say, fairly easy. I don't have no pivots. I'm just simply going back, side, forward. I have my torsions towards my leader, but I don't have any difficult actions that I have to do in between the steps. So assuming that that's what I'm doing on the, on the um, media luna and on the molinete, our combination is gonna now uh, include those double time, those, dou those double times. Just go with that, emphasize the word double time is gonna be uh, in different format. As we different, we work on it, yeah, and I remember, by now we work with the Miguel Caló, and just in case, because the thing happen, it's double time, it's a double time, on the beat that you are dancing to, yeah? I mean, if you beat is this, something in between this, it's a double time. Because sometimes people believe that the double time is three uh, beat and that speed because they say double time. And it's not, I mean, if there might be that this, while you practice on like this, That's the double for this beat. I mean, if you dance in later on here. Okay, that's a different time. So you pay attention to that, you can get to don't confuse on, on the music. So say, now, one, two, three, four, same way. Now, the first double time is in the ocho cortado. One, two, three, and. So the, this change of the pivot in the direction is in a double time. This is a double time. Forward, same way, five, side, and for me. Yeah, I have a double time in my change way. And now it can be a double time of her on her back cross because of the trajectory of her legs are shorter. 
one and two. So the double time is on the side step of her, the E of the music. Yeah? Pivoting, one and one and one. Because we want to close it in that double time. So we have it one, two, three, and four, five, and for me, six, and for her, seven, and as a pivoting, one, and two, and. Yeah? This but is again, the tempo. That's the sample where those doubles. <coughs> This could is be. the sample where could those doubles could be, but you listen to the music, makes no sense to put on the music, don't put it. Don't put slow it, yeah. it down, correct, correct. slow it down to it makes sense to the music. Yeah, so say, I'm gonna just play again the song and I dance it. Some moment of gonna be in those double in that timing. That's the propose that we do right now. Could be or could be not. And then we next week we continue maybe playing with this same co uh, pattern, yeah, and we can add different double time in different play to embed it or stuff like that. <laughs> Triste y sin valor, lento el paso al caminar, voy cargando mi dolor, lejos de la gran ciudad que me ha visto florecer, en las tardes más extrañas siento en el oscurecer, nadie observa mi vida, ni me importa mi dolor, nadie quiere mi vida, solo estoy con mi amargor, y así va a sin cesar desde el día que llegué, cuando en pos de un sueño loco, como todo abandoné. Y andando sin destino, pronto reaccioné. Here we have some uh, examples, right? Different type of music, different uh, interpretation based on what we hear. We can use different music. Today we choose Miguel Caló, uh, Lejos de Buenos Aires, right? So now, uh, apply single timings, focusing on duocho cortados, focusing in the pendulum, in the media luna, in focus in the double timing if you have a time. I believe you will have a time to do double time. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much for this part. You have something else to say there? Uh, I want to say that uh, basically in those, uh, in this one combination of today, you have three different combinations that we kind of practice in three different parts. And you can practice them separately. You can mix them all together in a way we propose or since we have all of us have a lot of time i mean not all of us because some of us still work but those of you who are uh, stuck at home uh, try to play with those combinations if you get to practice maybe you can make them in different order maybe you can separate them by the baldosa so uh, be creative and it's not just one way to do things yeah don't decide you don't take as i said one pattern for a for one to 16 or one to, to the next uh, phrase yeah, so we practice, we practice A first, later on another part, another part, mix it up. Make it, make it, make it your own patterns and have fun at home. Okay, guys, thank you, and I see you next Tuesday. Okay? See you next Tuesday. Bye, guys. Bye.